So we finally got to see some gameplay footage for Dragon Ball Sparking Zero, which is the next installment or a spiritual successor to the Budokai Tenkaichi series. And if I'm being honest with you, if I'm giving you guys my first impression of what I initially thought when I saw the trailer, it was awesome. The visual spectacle was amazing. Um, seeing Goku and Vegeta obviously clash is always a great thing to see. The destructibility in the map looked pretty cool and we also got teased um, beam struggle and it's going to be stage transition and from what I've heard is that this game will incorporate pretty much um, it, it takes the legendary gameplay of the Budokai Tenkaichi series and raises it to a whole new level. That sounds exciting. Um, Dragon Ball Spark and Zero will have a historic number of playable characters, each with their own signature ability, transformation and unique techniques. These are the things that most Dragon Ball fans want to hear. They want to hear that the Sparking Zero, the next spiritual installment, will carry on the Budokai Tenkaichi legacy of having an absurd amount of characters, you know, amazing visual um, techniques and transformation, beam struggles and stage transitions that we've come to know the Budokai Tenkaichi series. However, that being said, we also have to obviously tempt our or kind of control our expectation for the game because the studio that's making this game is in fact Spike Chunsoft. Now Spike Chunsoft is a company that hasn't had the best track record in my honest opinion. I believe they worked on you know Jump Force and if you remember correctly when we first saw the Jump Force um, trailers they looked amazing visually wise. It, you know, they showed some spectacles and it was shiny and we all thought that we were about to experience one of the greatest <laughs> unified um, anime games of all time. But then when the beta came out and people started to play the game, including myself, we quickly realized that the controls and the way that the game felt just wasn't great. It, it just really wasn't. Now, that being said, I know a lot of people would say, well, hold up a minute now. You're saying, you know, Spike Chunsoft might not do a great job, even though they were the ones who worked on the Dragon Ball Budokai Tenkaichi series. And you would be kind of like half right. Technically speaking, it was the company called Spike. Spike in of itself was the one that worked on the Budokai Tenkaichi series. And since then, they have been absolved and they literally formed a new company, which is now what we know as Budokai, no, sorry, which is now what we know as Spike Chunsoft. And, you know, like I said, Spike Chunsoft don't have the best track record. Jump Force was one of them that wasn't really that great. And if I'm not mistaken, they also worked on um, the One Punch Hero No One Knows game. If I'm not mistaken, let me just Google that up real quick. Um, yep, they worked on One Punch Man, a Hero Nobody Knows, and Jump Force. Which are two games that were just not that great. They were, they were not great. It wasn't memorable. And they had great visuals. If you go back and watch the trailers for One Punch Man, A Hero Nobody Knows, and you've watched back the trailers for Jump Force, they both had really great cinematic trailers. But when the game came out, it was met with a mixed reception, and it wasn't that great. This is why I'm saying that although we are pretty much excited for the next installment of the Budokai Tenkaichi game, and we've been starved for a game of this magnitude when it comes to the Dragon Ball IP, it is important that we continue to be very skeptical and obviously assess the game as it comes out. You guys made the same mistake with Storm Connection, or should I say Scam Connection. You were hyped up, you were blinded by your nostalgia, and you guys got scammed. As so, well, of course, maybe this might be the redeeming, the redemption act for Spike Chunsoft, because this is a major IP. This is not just a regular ass in an anime, this is Dragon Ball, and on top of that, it's Dragon Ball, the Budokai Tenkaichi series. There's way too much legacy behind that name for these guys to butcher it. So, although I'm willing to give these guys the benefit of the doubt, as I always will with every game that comes out, I have to be honest, right now, in the last two games that they've put out, for me personally, they don't have the best track record. They really don't have the best track record. And when we look at Jump Force, which has an IP of different anime, Dragon Ball, Naruto, One Piece, Bleach, 
um, the Yu-Gi-Oh series. These are some big IP names and they still managed to not do as well, so I don't know what to say. Like I said before, I'm going to be very skeptical, paying attention to what the games have to say because right now we've gotten our first red flag, personally, and that is the lack of a local multiplayer. Now be honest with me, when is the last time you've heard of a fighting game not having a local option to play multiplayer on? I mean, as far as I'm concerned, many of these people in the anime games community like to host tournaments, local tournaments where people can come in and participate in a local environment. Without that local feature, you can never really host a Dragon Ball Sparking Zero tournament unless obviously you do it by internet cable, whatever the case may be. But maybe that might be due to run about way. Well, having no local, I think it's a bit of a red flag. It's very rare for a fighting game to not have local, which is something that we should really keep in mind as we're going into this. For some of us, which also include myself, I don't really care for the local if I'm keeping it about 15. It's not that big of a deal. I play most of my fighting games online anyways, so I don't feel like I'm losing out on something. But again, it's a feature that most people will need and it's, mm, I don't know. Um, but yeah, it is what it is. I'm looking forward to seeing what type of features they'll have. Um, I believe some people also mentioned that this game featured um, kind of like a knockaway of the ultimates, which is something that was present in the um, uh, Radiant Blast series. So maybe they might be accumulating a bunch of different features from different past Dragon Ball games in those areas where they may see a feature and they'll be like, you know what, that's cool, let's take that in. Anyways, um, for me personally, visually, like I said, it looks amazing. Animation-wise, it looks really dynamic, really fluid, and there's nothing to complain when it comes to the visuals. Like, it's a Dragon Ball game. As long as the visuals and the spectacles are awesome, but most importantly, the gameplay. The gameplay has to feel great. Um, it can't feel stiff, it has to feel fluid, dynamic, and I don't know. In terms of the characters and the options available, like I said, they've, they themselves have said that it's going to be a historic amount. Me personally, I've never really cared for a huge amount of rosters because I'm going to be honest with you. Really honest with you. In every anime game where they've had a hun hundreds amount of um, character in a roster, I've only ever played with 10 of them. Ever. It's, it's a weird thing, I just never really cared for most characters, but I guess the options is there, it's available, so I can't even be mad. But that's just my thoughts on putting on it so far. Um, like I said before, temper your expectations. This is, a, this is a company that has a track record of not putting out really good anime games. Secondly, it is not the same company technically that produced the Budokai Tenkaichi game. It, um, the one that produced it is called Spike. That's it. The ones who are producing it now is Spike Chunsoft. Different entities altogether. Different people working on it as well. It's not the same people who worked on the previous game. Some of those, some of those developers have probably moved on to other projects. Keep this in mind. Um, but yeah, there's nothing else to say. Um, like everybody else, I'm hoping for it to be a really good game. But um, I will call out any red flags that I see as we get more information in dra for Dragon Ball back in zero i'm not gonna be a fanboy um if you want objective objective analysis of a game right um i would just that i would suggest subscribing to my channel but if you don't um i guess another youtuber would be globku globku is a really good individual when it comes to being honest being very precise in his observation when it comes to these anime games and that's another youtuber you, you can follow just to make sure you, that you don't waste your money on something that's not good. <laughs> Anyways, um, yep, I'll um, catch you guys next time. Peace.